So what I'm going to try and tell you about is how we apply our space know-how to transferring technology and know-how to activities back here on Earth. The Open University has been building analytical systems to analyse rocks from space for over 30 years. So Ian joined Colin from Cambridge back in the mid-80s. I joined the journey in around about 1993. And uh, the second project I ever worked on was Ptolemy and Rosetta. And really, Ptolemy was the first time we were able to shrink the big laboratory systems down into something that could be taken outside the laboratory and used by non-experts to do real-time measurements, as we've just seen on the comet. In 2004, when Rosetta launched, we had just lost Beagle 2. And uh, so I was tasked by Colin and Ian to look at how we might use this know-how for applications here on Earth. And we had an open canvas, and we looked at a whole range of different activities, from healthcare through to testing UK drinking water, through to looking at things like TB in Africa, flavours and fragrances, and also working with the New Zealand Forensic Science Service on testing hair for drug samples. As you've already heard before, one of the activities we looked at was actually developing air monitoring systems for UK submarines. The reason we could apply and go to all these different kind of uh, activity areas was because the OU has invested in world-leading portfolio of instrumentation. We can do things across the road that other people can't do. We've also got a big team of people who have different skill sets. The one thing about building a space instrumentation is you can't just all be chemists or physicists or engineers. You need that whole different pool of talent to allow you to design, develop, optimise and finally build and actually interpret the data. In addition, over the last 20 years, we've been working in partnership, not only with the end user communities, but also with a whole series of subcontractors, some of which I'll mention later. If you'd have asked me last week what it is we transfer, I'd have said it's just know-how. But actually, as of yesterday, we have a satellite company interested in a valve that we developed directly after Ptolemy. And the guy who developed is actually in the picture in the middle there. That's my colleague Simon Sheridan. And he developed a valve to allow you to control gases. The satellite company want to look to see if that can control satellites. So in a few years' time, you never know. If you're watching Premiership football on Sky TV, Simon might have allowed you to do that because his technology is allowing the satellites to go around the orbit. Our biggest impact project so far is the submarine project. We have developed an air monitoring system that will be used on all future UK submarines. If you're a submariner and you go on patrol, basically you're going inside a big metal tube the size of two football pitches. You're in there with 130 other men and nothing goes in and nothing comes out. You're on board for up to three months at any one time and so what submarines do is they have to make the air inside the submarine. What we have developed is the monitoring system that allows the submarine and the captain to make real-time decisions about the quality of the air. <coughs> what we've done is actually break a 30-year monopoly of an American company. So for the first time ever, Britain now has the capability of monitoring air on board UK submarines. We were recognized by BAE. The impact was recognized by a 2013 Chairman's Award for Innovation, one of only 23 awarded out of 1,600 applications. That's how important we are to BAE, the UK's, the UK's largest manufacturer. We've also been recognised by the government. Vince Cable has a quote here, which not only recognises the fact that we're making the environment safer for our submariners, which of course is very important for our strategic defence, but also we're making a big impact in terms of the economy, because this will be a British company that will now manufacture this for the next 40 years. So this quote from Vince is basically... As if, that, as if there are no Vince, <laughs> from Mr. Cable, is, uh, is basically saying how wonderful it is we've transferred space technology to another environment. This is the team that actually produced, designed, and actually then tested the system. More than half of that team actually worked on Rosetta and Beagle 2 and Cassini Huygens. So again, a lot of the team and the know-how came from us building small systems that are robust, 
and frankly, are faster, better, and cheaper than what's currently available. The actual system you can see in the bottom right-hand side there, and that's it in it being tested in BAE systems for EMC before it went on to the submarine. That system is a third of the size of the current American system, a third of the mass, and significantly less cost. A current system from America would cost you a million dollars. We can make it much smaller and much cheaper, and we've actually changed the way that BA designed the submarines because they can have multiple versions of these on board the system, making the environment, again, much, much safer. We don't build all these systems ourselves, or rather, we work in partnership with our subcontractors, and the four companies in the box are all local companies. They're all based in Milton Keynes or Bedford. The two other companies are also British. And in fact, Analox is the company that will now has been selected by BA Systems with our help to actually take this forward now and provide this as a through life service, probably through to around about 2050. So not only have we created and spent money with these companies for the project, we'll do so in the future. Our most recent industrial partnership has been with the world's largest flavors and fragrance company, a company called Givadan. And we've basically built them a robot that sniffs their perfumes. So as opposed to currently, they have humans and panels of humans who sniff the perfumes. We've built them a robot that will do it for them to allow them to do their formulations much more efficiently, cheaper, and ultimately reduce the cost to all of us. You can see this is actually a really recent article, and I'm very pleased to be uh, described as a boffin. So, um, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, this, 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 this is literally only two weeks old, or less than a week old, actually. And um, yeah, and so we have actually delivered that project, and uh, we're now in negotiation with Jividan how we take this forward over the next three years. In terms of healthcare, we've looked at a number of different uh, potential activities. But probably the most important one, or one with the biggest potential, is actually uh, the diagnosis of cancer. Again, we've gone from sniffing comets to sniffing submarines to sniffing perfumes to now sniffing cancer. And that's based on uh, work done 10 years ago by uh, a local medical charity called Medical Detection Dogs, who are based out in Great, uh, Great Horwood, uh, and they use dogs to sniff cancer. We now use a machine, and we can actually use mathematical algorithms to do the same thing. The particular cancer we're looking at is prostate cancer, and that's because 120,000 men in the UK every year are diagnosed with a positive PSA test, which is a blood test. But only 40,000 of those men actually have cancer. So 80,000 men are going through unnecessary treatment and also the emotional turmoil of being told they might have cancer when in fact they do not. So we've got a non-invasive test that sniffs urine that will save the NHS potentially 64 million pounds per year in reduced number of biopsies. And also obviously help these men uh, without having to worry about cancer. We have the proofs of personal studies and we're now working with Oxford University Hospitals NHS Trust to then do the, the next round of, of testing to allow us to prove it and hopefully be a disruptive technology that can save a lot of men a lot of heartache. In addition to doing technologies in the OU, I've been encouraged to set up some commercial companies funded by the European Space Agency. And yes, I am going to sniff for bed bugs in hotel rooms. <laughs> one in 10 hotels in London have bed bugs, one in four in America, but only one in 200 rooms. So what hotels need is a near real time detection mechanism. So what I'm doing is making an affordable version of uh, Ptolemy that can be used by hotel chains and we have one of the world's largest hotel chains signed up to allow us to do the trials. Um, the second actual experiment, or company rather, is looking at breath analysis to allow us to look and detect uh, the cause agent or bacteria that causes stomach um, ulcers and can also still cause stomach cancer. So that's a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Uh, and people in the developing world up to 80% of the people in the developing world can have this bacteria without knowing it. So what we're building is an affordable, portable system that can be used in Africa and India and other places to allow people to do that. As you can see, the companies are both, are both startups, but they've had significant investments. And based on the kind of equity share, if we actually manage to sign the contracts with the investors, we'll mean the companies are worth nearly two million pounds. So a uh, great start. Okay, so to summarize, space missions push the boundaries of science and engineering. 
We have to make things small, light, low power, and make them strong, and also survive really difficult conditions. To do that, you need to work with different sets of skills, and different organizations need to work together. We've partnershiped with end users, but also with subcontractors. That has resulted in new solutions and new technologies. That's also resulted in new opportunities. So just as Rosetta and Philae and Ptolemy continue on its journey around the solar system, if you've got any ideas, speak to me after, and you can join our journey sniffing the solar system. Thank you. Thank you.